Hey, what's happening guys? Today I want to talk about oscillators, CMOS logic, and how we can make a super simple oscillator with two resistors, a capacitor, and an inverter. I hear you already, I know what you're saying. Well that's a ring oscillator. Yes it is. And we're going to talk about how to make your ring oscillator how it works and why it works pretty cool this one I made well, let's go back and look at it one more time before we go too far let's see shed some light on the subject this is a 1k resistor a 1k resistor and this is a uh, like a 4500 uh, picofarad capacitor that's all you need. And you can get yourself a nice oscillator that oscillates at a rather good frequency. That's what, 153, 154 kilohertz. All right. Let's take a look at where this particular circuit came from. Because it didn't come out of my mind. But I learned this a long time ago. This is from Fairchild Semiconductor who doesn't exist anymore. They're uh, on semiconductor now, I believe. All right, we're hitting the Wayback Machine here all the way to uh, October 1974. I was five years old. This We're talking pre-Star Wars here. Man, the 70s or something. Anyway, we're going to build a ring oscillator, and this is Fairchild Application Note 118 which when I was in uh, school I'm not going to say how long ago that was was still being taught and when I taught I still taught it and that wasn't all that long ago so what this is talking about is uh, go away there we go Cre creating a, a CMOS oscillator ring oscillator using three inverters has to be an odd number. Do an even number, it won't happen. And the reason that happens is right here. The propagation delay is what causes a ring oscillator to work. Now the propagation delay, so here we have our input, output, input, output, input, output and there is a specific amount of time that it takes for the signal to go through that gate and then go between this gate and this gate and then there and then this gate and this gate and then go through it so this amount of time right here this is our propagation delay for our ring oscillator and in theory this will This formula will tell you the frequency at which you oscillate at. What it will actually tell you is the maximum frequency. So the maximum frequency of oscillation is the total propagation delay, TP, by the number of gates. So it is the inverse of 2 times the number of gates, so 2 times 6 times the propagation delay. And how do we find the propagation delay? Well, there's a lot of ways. You can come down and... Uh, Look at the charts for your chips. Always good to study your data, your data sheets when you're making a circuit. But in this case, for the 74HC04, we know that it is about 17 nanoseconds. So you can figure out your total propagation delay. And doing that, you can make that work. Now, it's unstable, so we're going to make this circuit right here. This is the three-gate oscillator, the three-gate ring oscillator. Pretty simple. So we're using 1K here, 1K here, and uh, we can draw, right? 40, 4, yeah, I don't want them to look like uh, SS symbols, 44, 
94. Pico Farads. All right, so that is the circuit that you saw going on there on the uh, the breadboard. And I'm going to draw that circuit out, and we're going to go over there and take a look at it. Okay? Cool. Okay, so here is a simple drawing of the circuit. You can zoom in here. A little too much, maybe. There we go. Somebody should remind me to fill out all forms completely because I forget a lot. <laughs> Pin 14 goes to VCC, in this case that's 5 volts. Pin 7 goes to ground. You're going to connect pins 2 and 3 and pins 4 and 5 together. Then you're going to run a resistor from pin 1, a resistor from pin 6, and a capacitor from the output of pin 4 down to a common bus and Bob's your uncle you've got yourself a CMOS inverter ring oscillator it's really that simple we'll go all the way back from 1974 I'm gonna put a link to this data sheet down below in the not this is not the data sheet this is an application note I'm going to put a note let's try this again I am going to put a link to this application note down below and you can check it out so let's try the math real quick here where's my calculator there it is okay so the formula because in our case R1 is equal to R2, we can figure out our frequency with this formula, 0 0.559 over RC. So, if we say 0 0.559 divided by 1 times, so I'm just going to get rid of the 1, you'll see how this works out. Now, I better not do that or people are going to get confused. Hold on. Okay, so if we do it like this, according to this formula right here, we'll say 1,000 times 0.12345678 equals... I, I was just going to type that in, but I didn't. We'll put that in memory. Then we'll say 0.559 divided by memory readout equals our formula that's not right I think Paul put in one too many zeros let's try it again 1k times point one two three four five six seven eight four four nine four equals put that in memory and then 0 0.559 divided by what's in the memory equals, there we go, 124,388. And we got, what was our, 148 kilohertz. They're saying 124 kilohertz. So we're, you know, 24 kilohertz off, but are my resistors actually 1K? I don't know we'd have to find out but that's close enough in the ballpark that we know this formula right here if you're using two resistors of the same value the formula is true so we're good there So there you have one way a very old way of building a ring oscillator using a 74 HC 04. It's pretty simple. Only three components needed. And you do end up getting a decent square wave. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.